In the weird and wonderful world of Von Helton, I guess that the fact that the sun and brown dwarfs, for that matter, are made out of gas implies that they just float through the universe like beautiful soap bubbles with just as much substance to them as soap bubbles. Pretty, pretty, colorful soap bubbles. Of course, reality is a tiny little bit different. In reality, the sun, even though it is made out of gas, is the most massive object in the, U in the solar system by far. Even Jupiter, the next most massive object in the solar system, which is also made out of gas, even though there are some speculations going around that there might be a rocky core inside, even Jupiter is only one thousandth the size of the Sun, and compared to the Sun, it is minuscule. A brown dwarf is something that just didn't make it to becoming a star. And von Helton himself tells us that this brown star of which he warns us, this Hellion 1957 thing, is supposedly something between one third and one half the size of the Sun. I'm going to be kind to von Helton here. I'm going to take his lower estimate. His lower estimate that it is one third the size of the Sun. That still makes it a huge a massive object compared to which even Jupiter is minuscule. Don't forget that boys and girls. Now of course when on the 22nd of August I posted a very short little video saying nothing other than LOL after listening to Von Helton's bullshit he got all high and mighty about this. He got very, very righteously indignated over this because he told me, well, I only said it was only a chance of 7% that this would happen. 7 to 50%, quite a margin of error there. But let's again be extremely kind to Von Helton because I'm in such a generous mood. Let's be very, very kind. Here's the deal. I'm going to take his lower estimate of 7%. There was only a 7% chance of this brown dwarf, this massive object about one third the size of the sun, crashing into the sun. So there was a 93% of it not crashing into the sun. And von Helton, of course, thinks in his happy, happy soap bubble world that that means that he's off the hook. He thinks that this means that the Sun and Hellion just floated past each other like beautiful soap bubbles, not interacting with each other. Of course, reality is even crazier than von Helton, and reality doesn't work like that. Sorry. No, when in an object as massive as a third the size of the Sun plows its way through our solar system then it's going to leave a gravitational wake in which the planets will be bobbing up and down like rubber duckies in the wake of an oil tanker. To think that just because there was only a 7% chance of this object hitting the Sun according to the crazy notions of von Helton anyway, that that means that if it didn't hit the Sun, we get away scot-free, is preposterous in the extreme. No. Let me show you something that will boggle your mind. This is a simulation of what would happen if a heavy object, something of the size of a brown star, brown dwarf or a star, were to make its way through the solar system. Note that in this simulation the object in question, the rogue star that's going to go through the solar system, does not 
impact anything. It just goes on its merry way through the solar system, past the planets and straight out again. But see what happens. As this object starts approaching the Sun, it starts feeling the gravitation of the Sun. And the Sun starts feeling its gravitation. And not only that, look at the other planets. They are now starting to feel the gravitational pull of this object. And as it gets closer and closer to the inner planets, there's going to be more and more of distortion. But watch what happens when it reaches the orbits of Mars. That's sort of a distance away from the Sun. Suddenly, in this particular simulation anyway, the Earth just happens to be in a very convenient spot so that it feels the pull of this object more than it feels the pull of the Sun. And what happens? It starts following the intruder star. This Earth in this simulation actually ends up in orbit around the intruder. Mars, as you can see down below, is just saying sayonara to the whole thing and is taking it out of there. Jupiter and Saturn are suddenly feeling the push of this object. They are slingshotted into much wider orbit. If you look over to the right, you can see Neptune and later on Pluto feeling the pull of the object and making their way into the solar system. They will end up in much closer orbits around the Sun. But the Earth is the most dramatic. The Earth will end up in orbit around the new star, the star that came through the solar system. The Earth is saying goodbye to everybody. This is just one simulation. But don't get me wrong, in von Helton's crazy ideas, this object was going to go very close to the Sun. He says there was a 7%, if not a 50%, but a 7% chance of this thing actually impacting with the Sun. So it will have, at the best, in the best of cases, will have passed the Sun very closely. Closer than the orbit of Mercury or definitely Venus. In the simulation that I just showed you, the object passed beyond the orbit of Mars. And still, it completely wreaked havoc with the inner planets. Venus ended up in the orbit of the Earth. The Earth and Mars left the solar system and all the other planets are completely out of whack. If this thing had actually existed and it had actually gone into the inner circle of the solar system, we would not be here today to discuss this the way we are now. Von Helden is a fucking moron and the f proof of that is outside your window. Just look at it. Look at the weather outside. Look at how it's business as usual. Nothing has happened. Like I said on the 22nd of August. Nothing has happened. And von Helden, you are a moron.